So I think I'm going to put the elevator on hold for just a little bit and I'm going to do this uh, next mystery prop next. Um, what I had in mind was I'm going to do like a crouching zombie where it's down like eating a body or something like that and uh, people will walk up from behind it, um, you know, up to its back. And so when the zombies crouch down, uh, when the prop's triggered, uh, the shoulder will turn 90 degrees and then the head will turn 90 degrees to look back at them. Um, I think it's going to be a pretty cool little, you know, quick uh, scare. So um, I already got a uh, mechanism made up for it, which I'll show it to you next, which uh, looks like it's going to work pretty well. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty excited about this one. So we'll get into this one next. So this is the mechanism that's uh, hopefully going to make this thing all work. Um, this is, uh, let's see, this is going to be down here at the, uh, the hip level and the shoulders are somewhere right about in here. And this is how this is hopefully going to work. So um, I used these little three inch Lazy Susan um, bearings to let, allow this to spin because we're going to, you know, spin the, uh, the shoulders 90 degrees. And we welded on this uh, little hinge here. Um, and what that's going to do is the air cylinder is going to get bolted to, the, uh, to that hinge. So when the cylinder spins, It'll allow that the uh, the shoulders to turn 90 degrees, okay? And then, uh, of course, they'll have to have a pivot back here. And, uh, of course, you need the pivot here because as this thing turns, um, it's going to want to follow the arc. And so it'll actually, you know, the cylinder itself will move back and forth. So um, I laid this up in AutoCAD to get the measurements right because this is a 2-inch um, stroke. So I had to put it in AutoCAD to see where the distance of this pivot point needed to be. So when it um, extended the two inches, I got a true 90 degree turn, if that makes sense. So that's gonna do it for the shoulder, or, uh, excuse me, for the, uh, yeah, for the shoulder to spin. Now for the head, um, exact same scenario. I'm gonna put the camera down here so I can use both hands. So on the shoulders, it's the exact same setup. Um, we, got, uh, we got a bearing here and we got our pivot point here. So there will be a board um, mounted on top of this for uh, where the shoulders are actually gonna be mounted onto. And the, uh, the bottom, um, I guess it'd be the top of the uh, uh, Lazy Susan spinner deal <laughs> will be attached to that board. So this will slip down right over top like that. This will be stationary. And you see how that will do the same thing. I'll have another uh, air cylinder up here um, working the uh, the head so that will turn the uh, the head 90 degrees so the shoulders will turn 90 with the air cylinder everything will be you know in this orientation if you can see that and then it'll turn the uh, the head 90 degrees so I think this is gonna work as long as it all fits inside the um, inside the uh, the body we'll be in good shape so I might end up having to get a smaller um, cylinder for the uh, for the head because this one's just way overkill and it's kind of big and bulky so we might end up getting like a three-quarter bore with a two-inch stroke so anyway yeah i'm pretty excited about this we're gonna get playing around with this and uh see what we can do so for this next prop that i'm gonna start um i need a torso and it needs to be lightweight and everything um, but it has to be somewhat rigid. Um, so I'm not going to try doing my PVC with the pillow and everything. Um, what I have is I dug out my uh, torso for my mannequin. And I hate to have to do this, but I think I'm going to. I'm going to take this and um, cut it right in half and uh, to have two halves. And uh, I'm going to line the inside with uh, masking tape. And then I'm going to try to fill it with great stuff and see if I can't... Uh, get two halves of a torso and then glue the two halves together. Um, I'm sure somebody's tried this before. Um, I've, I haven't seen it done, but I'm, I'm sure someone's tried it, so I'm not sure how well this is gonna work. Um, looks like I got some holes and stuff I'm gonna have to temporarily patch up. Um, I hope I'm not ruining my mannequin, but um, 
I don't know, this thing's been put through the ringers already. So anyway, that's what we're going to do. Cut this dude in half and uh, see if we can't get a form made. So I coated the entire inside of this mannequin with uh, masking tape and I'm about to spray the spray foam, but I think what I'm going to do first is um, coat it with this paste wax and that'll kind of help it release when I go to pull it out and when the, um, when the uh, gray stuff is all uh, cured. So hopefully that'll work. All right, I'm gonna stop and fast forward through this right here. Uh, I learned a few things during this process. So cutting the mannequin in half and lining it with masking tape. The masking tape uh, was not necessary and the masking tape was a big pain in the ass to peel out after the fact. Uh, the wax worked out really, really well when it came to um, pulling out the, uh, the form. Um, it allowed it, it, didn't, it hardly stuck at all. So, so that worked well. The great stuff was terrible. When I first pulled it out of the form, it looked beautiful. It was, it was a perfect form and everything. Um, but then over the course of a few days, the thing shrunk up a ridiculous amount, uh, like probably a good inch all the way around. So I ended up having to keep adding uh, spray foam and carving it and adding spray foam and carving it. So um, long story short, great stuff did not work. Uh, maybe another foam like the uh, AB foam that you get from Home Depot would been a lot better choice. So real quick while I'm thinking about it, uh, while I have it tore apart, um, I'm about to uh, grate stuff the, the legs and everything and then we'll shave it down and sculpt it and everything. But um, real quickly, this is uh, how the, uh, the torso is hinged. It's nothing more than um, a door hinge and then this little uh, uh, smaller hinge is what is uh, attached to the, um, the solenoid or uh, the cylinder underneath here. So that's all it is. It just rocks back and forth, and um, this allows the uh, the uh, cylinder to pivot on. So before I get too crazy, let me uh, show you what I got mocked up here. Um, I think the last little segment I videotaped, um, none of this was put together. But um, yeah, this is uh, starting to. Look like something here. You can see the legs we got. Um, it's going to have three movements. Uh, the first cylinder here, um, as it's crouched down, when that one's triggered, it'll allow the guy to sit up. And I can't really hold it and get the camera far enough back, but basically sit straight up and down. Then when the second cylinder is activated, that'll turn its shoulders here, like so. And if I can do this without dropping it all, the third cylinder up here at the top will turn the head. So when it's all said and done, it'll be looking straight back. So um, I think it's, while it's crouching down, it'll be holding some type of gory something, intestines, a heart or something. And um, you might twitch a little bit, might bounce up a little bit, turn its head back and forth. And then uh, once it's, um, once the scare is activated it'll sit up real quick turn and turn back and look at uh, look at the patrons so so far this is working out okay as long as I can uh, get it all contained within the uh, within the body you guys are gonna find this hard to believe but I have no sculpting background can you believe that <laughs> so Obviously, this is uh, the leg that I haven't done yet with the great stuff on it, and this is the leg that I hacked at it for a little bit. It only took me about, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes to, to get to that point, and I think that's going to be perfectly acceptable um, for filling out my legs. Um, all I used was my retractable razor blade. Um, I got a... Uh, cheese grater, handheld cheese grater, which didn't work that well. Uh, I found just using my orbital sander worked a hell of a lot faster. So pretty much the, uh, the knife and the, the uh, sander have all I've been using to hack this thing down. So now I just got to get the other leg done and uh, start putting it back together. So my guy here is going to need a butt. There's nothing here. It's just wood. So I've been brainstorming on what the best way of going about doing that and I couldn't come up with a good way so I'm just gonna do what I think will be the easiest and I got some chicken wire up there and I think I'm going to um, frame this out or whatever you want to call it and then uh, skim over it with um, some great stuff and then I can shave it down and shape it and stuff like that I think that will probably be my best bet 
So we'll give it a shot. Look at that ass. Mm -mm. So I took the chicken wire and just kind of sculpted it and uh, pinned it in a couple places. And uh, I'm hoping this is going to be enough substructure to lay some great stuff over and for it to uh, stick to. I think it's going to work all right. Um, I didn't go all the way up underneath here for a couple of reasons. One, the eye is never going to see anything down here. Plus, I need this space in here for like all the uh, solenoid valves and stuff like that. So I think this is going to work. Um, I've got the trash bag over here just because it's too lazy to take off the, uh, the um, jumpsuit. So uh, fingers crossed that this works. So before I get too crazy, I, um, well, I got my butt done. Big butt. It's not that big. A big butt. <laughs> um, the, uh, the spray foam on the chicken wire worked out uh, really well. So I uh, spray foamed it, carved it down with a knife, and then uh, took my, my uh, orbital and sanded it down smooth. And uh, yeah, that worked out pretty good. So took the, um, took the jumpsuit back off because I'm going to need to distress that. Um, I kind of want to get it on up to at least the hips before I go too farther um, just so I have that done because it's kind of a pain in the ass to get on and off. So, so before I tackle this hot mess, um, I need to get my jumpsuit distressed. Um, I want to get it put on the legs before I start building all that up. So I want to get this all dirty and grungied up. Uh, beforehand so I've already gone through and hit this with the belt sander you can see some holes and stuff like that but um, I got my paints and my stains and stuff this is the same method that I did on my zombies last year with uh, with the stains and the baby powder and some uh, different color spray paints so anyway I'm gonna do that real quick and then uh, get that put back on the legs and then uh, we'll get back into this and there we go it was about uh, 15 minutes worth of uh, work, I guess. Um, this is as far as I'm going to go with the uh, distressing. Then once it's all put back together and everything is when we'll start adding the blood and the gore and all that stuff. But uh, yeah, just as far as, you know, dungeoning it up and everything, if that's a word, um, that's, uh, that's going to do it. So I've got my hands in here. These came from a Terror Syndicate. Um, they're unpainted. And I'm waiting for my head to come in from uh, Doomsday Effects um, so I can hopefully attempt to uh, match the, the paint on it so we'll uh, I think I'm the heads coming in tomorrow so we'll uh, we'll be tackling that coming up here soon too well we got a problem he's too fat <laughs> jumpsuit doesn't zip up so I was kind of afraid of that so I'm guessing what I'm gonna have to do is come in here and literally just cut all the gut out um, I think with uh, with that vest that I have and all the clothes and everything, this doesn't really need to be that solid anyway for the uh, for the movement. Um, I think it'll still look like it's still a uh, a full full body. So, yep, <laughs> we got a fat zombie. Quick shot of the plumbing. Got the uh, solenoid valves down here in the crotch area, and got our airlines all ran to the appropriate cylinders. So now we can button this thing up and uh, fire it up and start messing around with all the, the valves and everything get it tuned in. So this is my highly technical way of contorting myself into a holding position while the PVC, PVC cools. That'll work. So right now I got my hands that I got from uh, Terror Syndicate and I'm trying to match the paint that's on my Doomsday Effects uh, bust that I have here. I've already went ahead and did a base coat. I tried to find like a, a thin spot in the, the head um, to get a somewhat of a close color, base color to start with. And now I'm just doing a, um, a wash coat. And basically what I did was I took um, some burnt ember and some black and I mix that up 50-50 with some uh, liquid latex. I don't know if this is the right way of doing it but um, we're gonna give it a shot here anyway. So basically all I'm doing is um, applying it liberally onto hand. I 
already did one hand already, so I have learned that you have to work quickly and get it off quickly because this stuff sets up very quick. I guess it's probably from the latex. I really don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just doing what feels right. I don't know what it is, if it's the gloves or painting in general, but as soon as I put them on and start painting, my face immediately starts itching. So I'm trying to find a knuckle that's clean enough to scratch my face with. All right, after the wash coat, I went through with my airbrush and um, just hit it with some brown just to try to give it a little bit more color, a little bit more depth. Um, it doesn't match the, uh, the Doomsday bust exactly or even remotely close, but I think it is going to be passable anyway. So here's the plan. I'm going to fill up the, uh, these hands with foam. And this is going to be the, uh, I guess, the shaft. I drilled a hole in the end here so when the great stuff um, expands, it'll kind of hopefully fill into these holes and kind of lock it in place. Um, and then this shaft then will slip into the arm, if you can see that there, like so. And then I'll be able to run a screw into it down here somewhere. That's the plan. So I got a makeshift, um, this, this would be the, uh, the arm. And I put some shrink wrap on it here. I'm going to put some wax on it. So hopefully when I do the great stuff, it fills down over top of the PVC. And then when it dries, I can pull it out and it'll fit right onto the arm. Maybe. We'll see if this works. So since the head's going to be spinning um, relatively quickly, it's going to want to have a tendency to, uh, to spin on the shaft here. So what I did was I split it down the middle and I add this piece of uh, wood here, basically to increase the uh, surface area. So when it spins, it's um, not going to want to um, spin on the shaft. So hopefully that should work. All right, here's the last look before I button this thing all up and uh, start doing the final detail. Um, the whole thing I tried with the uh, arms earlier really worked out really well. This, um, it's hard to do this one hand, but that piece of PVC is locked in there very well. And it slides over this very easily too. And so now all I gotta do is just run a screw in here and lock that thing into place and it's good to go. So um, my arms, I already got them covered up with uh, pool noodles and everything already, but um, I, uh, I like to use one inch PVC and then just use a heat gun to um, move and manipulate the uh, the arms. Uh, I like doing that better than the um, using the joints and everything because well one those PVC joints are really expensive and two I think you get a lot better um, a lot more precise um, what am I trying to say precise uh, angles and everything just by using a heat gun and you know spraying it with the water to cool it down so anyway this um this whole PV this whole uh, great stuff torso thing um, it sucked, <laughs> but uh, you know we got it to work. It, <clears throat> it took several layers of you know great stuff and then carving it down and everything. But we finally got it to work. But uh, um, it turns very nicely, effortlessly, which is good. You see it moving there. Same thing with the uh, with the head. So um, put this together and uh, we'll get the programming going and uh, get this thing fired up. Well, it wouldn't be any fun if we didn't run into some problems. So I got them all dressed up. I'm going to start uh, doing the final detail and um, working on the programming. And he wouldn't stand up. Um, he was just too heavy with all the clothes and everything. Luckily, I had these. Um, these are like spring-loaded um, actuator things for like um, cedar chests and stuff to lift the lids up. And I put one there. And I put one over here on the other side there on both legs and um, that fixed the problem. It uh, shoots right up now just like it's supposed to. So cool. All right, here's our completed zombie. Got it all bloodied up and gored and all that stuff. Everything turned out um, pretty well. I'm pretty happy with everything. Got the uh, sequences all programmed and playing around with those. I got two separate ones I'm going to play with. One's where uh, it just does the uh, the sit-up 
and the scare. And the other one has some additional, you know, thrashing around before it does all that. But um, I used this uh, $20 prop controller I made a little while back and um, got Bluetooth speaker, got one power supply for the controller and one power supply for the uh, solenoid valves. So I'm going to uh, plug it up and we'll run through a sequence and then uh, we'll do the second one with the, with the additional movement and stuff like that. So see how that goes. Trigger that. All right, now we'll throw in the other sequence with a little bit more flailing and stuff and uh, see how that goes. All right, we loaded up the uh, second sequence, so let's uh, give this one a shot here. Hey, if you made it this far, thanks for watching, guys. This has been a project that I've been wanting to do for quite some time. Uh, if you got any comments or questions, feel free to leave them down below. And uh, let me know which sequence you guys like. If you like just the uh, straight-up sitting-up scare, or if you like the whole twitching and thrashing around portion. So, anyway, thanks again. Um, feel free to subscribe if you want to see some more stuff. And uh, some Road to October will be coming up here shortly. So, uh, we'll check you later. VIP, world's coming to an end before we D.I.E. It's only right you let me take a little B.I.T. Up in her blood and she ain't sleeping. Saying she can go for three days. That's a long weekend. Now I'm thinking you should let my teeth sink and let me taste a little bit. Go play along. It's a zombie apocalypse. It's a zombie apocalypse.